Hey guys, hey, I want to show you a computer that a friend of mine, Sean, picked up. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel called Simple Things. And he picked this thing up off of uh, eBay. And um, he fired it up. And it obviously had some boot problems, etc. So um, here, here's the failures right here. And if you have one of these and you boot it up and you pull the board out, um, a lot of times you're going to find that because the batteries are so old, um, they've corroded like this one here. And one of the problems is, is they tend to corrode uh, that chip right next to it, that U49, uh, along with a lot of the runs. Some of them get so corroded, they'll actually eat the runs right off the board. So this one had been ate up so much that there was only three of the legs actually holding uh, the chip on and that was those lower three right there so uh, I went ahead and I desoldered those three legs and you can see just the amount of corrosion underneath uh, this item it's just it's amazing that, that there's any pads left on this thing from the battery acid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to clean them up if you still have pads uh, first thing you do is you put some flux down and then you go ahead and you put some solder on it, like this right here. And then you get a, a round, uh, like X-Acto blade. So you use that X-Acto blade to gently scrape off the corrosion. And then when you flux it and reflow it, the solder pulls out the corrosion. And that, that's, that's the process. You just keep repeating that until the corrosion has gone and you have good pads. See, I put some more flux on here and I've re-soldered it again. You can see that the pads are already starting to rejuvenate here. And this is after I've cleaned it up like three or four times. And see the little black marks on some of the pads, specifically the upper ones? That's corrosion still embedded in the solder on the pads. And you can see the hole via through the middle one on the top where I scraped it down to the copper. Uh, as long as you're gentle, you can do that. And you can see also on the bottom left, uh, next to the, the one there, uh, the right circle on the bottom, uh, where I've scraped it down to the copper. You just continue to reflow. Now, if you remember from the first reflow, how bad it looked, um, you, there's a huge difference here. These are nice and smooth now. Also, the holes, the vias get corrosion in them too. So... You'll have to address those later. If you look here at the BT1, the bottom, uh, the right connection in the middle of the right of the picture, you can see where there was the acid had just literally ate the pad off. So here I'm going after the bottom ones, and I've reflowed. And you can still see that um, reflowing it is starting to draw all the corrosion out of the out of the tin and the solder that's on it. And now it's almost it's almost it's almost perfect now you can see they're looking really good uh, I wicked them off that bottom right one there with the hole that was actually where the corrosion had gone all the way through so let's go ahead and attack this chip now it would be cheaper to just buy a chip you could pick them up on eBay or other places what I do is I go ahead and I scrape them and then I put some solder on them flux them and then I wick that solder off and what happens is that solder starts to absorb the corrosion that's in that on those chip legs now you have to have a good chip to start with uh, then you go ahead and clean it off uh, you put some solder on the inside flow it and then go ahead and wick it off and you can drag that slightly sideways a little bit and you can see that the chip is just starting to rejuvenate here and here it is after it's all cleaned up and it's ready to go back on the board I've put it back on the board uh, I've centered the legs up. I haven't soldered it to the board. And one of the things I like to do in order to keep a lot of flux off the board is I just put some flux on the thing and I roll up a, a tissue paper and I dip it in there and then I wipe it on the pads itself so I don't have flux running all over the board. Sometimes you can't get away from it, but I, I try to do this first. So do the board and then go ahead and treat all the legs, both sides. Uh, you got to do the top in the bottom as well there we go I'm doing the bottom here and then uh, go ahead and place the chip on the board and on the bottom right I've cut a small piece of solder right there I did a close-up there and those legs should be fairly well centered in there and uh, I float it and they're just 
wasn't what enough solder in there for me so I put a little sliver there and then I refloat it and now it looks fairly good so when you get done with that um, that's the zoom out of it then go ahead and, and do the top left leg I do the opposing corners I did the bottom two right here and then go ahead and start flowing it now you'll notice that the one on the right there had a lot of flux on it I mean a lot of solder I just went ahead and wicked it off and refloat it and here it is uh, the chip has been completely reflowed cleaned up and good to go and uh, there's other components on the board too this one will have to be addressed also the vias will have to be cleaned up you can see where uh, these are definitely messed up don't worry about the conformal coating so much uh, when you uh, scrape them off it's okay just be gentle with those those uh, uh, vias when you scrape them you know if you get too aggressive uh, you're gonna have a problem I used a uh, I think it was a number number 80 drill bit or something like that and I uh, reflowed the pads several times and ran the drill bit just I didn't turn the drill bit I just pushed the drill bit up and down through the holes and uh, then I reflowed them and they turned out fairly well and you have to do that through the whole board all right, after we did that, he used one of those uh, digital uh, floppy drives. Uh, he loaded the software on it, and now he's getting a pass on everything. Here's a couple of good shots of the setup screen. And then now uh, he's going to go ahead and fire it up. And we're going to go ahead and watch the actual boot as compared to last time. So reference ID 17. I don't remember what it is. I think that's on all of them. He's the computer guy. I'm just like the solder guy. <laughs> I take care of his, his needs. Uh, sorry about the flicker on top. Don't know what that's from. But can't do anything about it. And that's the uh, drives starting MS-DOS. And it's uh, testing the memory here. It's kind of a long, long process for you guys. But I thought it would be nice for you guys to see the whole process. taking longer than I expected it's not like today's modern computers you fire them up and they just pretty much are there <laughs> check out the dates 1991 and 1995 wow okay here's just a couple of screenshots <clears throat> after the thing came up uh, he decided to go ahead and play doom on it I thought that was pretty cool <laughs> running around all right guys uh thanks for watching if you have any questions just drop them in the comments uh don't forget to go over to my friend's uh, website simple things i think i can put a link of that in the show more comments below so again thanks for watching guys god bless you all and keith nunyao bye